Okay, and we are back to finally understand what in the world is stress and why do I care about it. Okay, so what I have right here is I have a bar and it's got some sort of axial load P. Why do they use P for load instead of F? I have no idea, but your textbook does and so that's why I used to. So since we're, we care about how bodies deform and how they suddenly deform, and if they can withstand the loading, we need to figure out ways to talk about that. Now, this deformation will come in many different ways. We're going to look at all these throughout the semester. It can be stretching, which is what we're going to focus on right now. It can be bending or twisting. We'll see those a little bit later. And in most cases, you can't even see it. It's going to be completely imperceptible. Now, all these deformations are due to the internal forces within an object, and specifically how intense those internal forces are. So, why we care about intensity is because it's always over an area. Like, I have a forest right here. We might even look at it as like a point force, but eventually, if I'm going to, you know, cut open this bar, there's forces acting throughout the entire surface. And those are what we care about. Those are what lead to deformation. So the simplest definition of stress is simply stress equals force over area. What force? That guy, the load P in most cases. What area? The cross-sectional area that's perpendicular to the force. Why? Because this is normal stress. So our normal stress here looks like this. This is the equation for normal stress. That's our symbol for normal stress. It's a sigma. We call it normal stress because it is normal. We're choosing a plane that is normal to my load. My load is going down. My plane that I cut here is perpendicular or at a right angle to that load. And here's our force F on the inside. We just said that the force is the internal force rather than being the external load. The reason for that is because sometimes your load and your force are not the same. So if I divide my force by the area, what I am doing is I am normalizing my force. I'm saying, yes, you may be a big force, but if I've got a gigantic column and there I am standing in the middle of it, I'm not too worried about, my legs are crazy in this picture, I'm not too worried about that column failing. That column is ginormous. It's got a massive area, okay? That is a huge area. On the other hand, if I am standing on a tiny little column, and here I am, I'm probably pretty worried about it breaking. Why? Because even if my force is the same, like the amount of pressure I'm putting on that column is the same, this guy's got a much smaller area, which means the stress it's feeling is much higher. And you can think about stress just like you feel stress during an exam. It's not a good thing. You don't want to have huge stresses because they don't feel good for you or for anybody else. Okay, we'll do an example in this next problem and we'll figure out how we can calculate stress for some simple equations. Thank you all so much. I'll see you all in a bit.